Jetpack Compose always presents problem when dealing with recompositions. In this video, I'm going to share with you one way in order to improve the recompositions of your Jetpack Compose UI. Let's get started. So my good friends and welcome back to the channel, always with Yunus Shafiri. So here I'm having just a simple Android project and here I'm having this activity. This is a pretty simple screen in order to demonstrate what I'm saying. So let's say that I'm having this width and height of the screen. This is something you can get from the local configuration. And then I'm having two animatable properties in which they will animate this text. This is just the emoji text. If we run this project, we're going to see the following. It will be here and then it will go here. You can see I'm running two different things at the same time because I have X and Y. And then I'm setting the X and Y here as the offset of this text. And then I'm animating them all at the same time using the weight all and the two sync. Because if I try to do them like that, it won't work as expected. It will animate first X and then it will animate Y. Okay, but this is not the required behavior. Now, we are not talking about the animation here. We are talking about the recomposition. You can open something called the layout inspector and you can rerun our screen. So here you see it is like that. If you open this one, you will see this is the number of recompositions. This is the number of skipped recomposition, and this is the number of uh, normal recomposition, okay? 28, this is quite a lot. Now this happens a lot when we have something changing too much. This X property is changing from this one to this one. But actually you will tell me, well, we need to change it anyway. I will say, yes, we need to change it, but we don't have to recompose our screen just in order to change it. Because this is something should happen at the layout or the draw phase, okay? Not something in the recomposition phase because we have three phases in Compose. So this is happening because of this one. Now, why this modifier specifically trigger recomposition? Because it is built that way. In the next time, for example, in the next frame, let's say this is will be one and this will be one, okay? So the next one and after that, it will be two to four example, let's present just two to. These are considered two different composables. Actually, it won't change this one. It will remove this one and replace it with this one. And this will cause the change in the recomposition tree. So what we do, we often change this kind of thing with something called uh, lambdas, right? Modifier with lambdas. What will happen is that you try to search whenever you find offset, for example, you will see this offset with the lambda, okay? So this is different, right? Let me just do it for you here. Now here we can present something called the int offset. Let's complete the implementation. And here in the int offset, you need to get the X and you need to get the value and then DP. And then you have to round it to pixel. This is specific for the int offset. You can do the same thing for the Y, okay? Just with this modification, right? We did the anything. You saw it was 28. So let's run it. You will see one and then it is changing and it's still one. You see the changes? Why? Because we didn't recompose, we just redraw and relay out this component. Now, why this is different? As I said, now in the composition, it is explained as tree. We have a box and then we have a text and each text will have a modifier, right? Now, if the modifier was the normal modifier, it will cause this text to recompose because this is changing. It will think that this is complete new different modifier because of those values, the previous values. But right now, it's not. It's actually only one modifier. And then this calculation is happening not in the composition state or the composition phase, but in the redraw or in the relayout, okay? So this is just a difference. Whenever you are faced with modifiers that can change the state frequently, for example, the offset, let's say the rotation, let's say stuff like that, you can change it with something that will calculate this later on, not in the recomposition state, okay? For example, if you want to change, I think, the rotation, you have to do graphic layer because usually we have the rotate, exactly. With the rotate, it doesn't accept any other modifier, but you can change it with the graphic layer. And here in this graphic layer, there is many things. For example, the alpha, you can change it from here, the rotation, exactly X, Y, and Z, for example, and many other stuff, the translation and stuff like that. Okay, so always whenever you have something changing a lot and you think it will going to impact the recomposition, try to move it further in the phases. So you will calculate it later on. Okay, so this is pretty much it for this video to improve your Jetpack Compose speed and performance, right? I also have another video about the drive state of. This will also help you a lot to improve the speed, especially for a state that is changing a lot. 
That's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching this video to the end. If you didn't subscribe to my newsletter, I will put the link in the description below so you can get actionable advice every week to become a better developer and productive developer. Thank you very much and see you in the next videos. Assalamu alaikum.